you have choices. You have power. You are the CEO. And if you fire the intern who's not living up to his expectations, that's far more empowering than giving your power away and waiting for some guy to change in order to be the man that you hope he would be. Hey, this is Evan Marcant, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women and your personal trainer for love. Welcome back to the Love You podcast. I'm excited. We're talking about the cost of staying in a bad relationship and much, much more. Before we get into the details, just want to remind you, if you enjoy the Love You podcast, please share it with a friend. Please go to Apple or Spotify and give us a positive review or a five-star review. Say something in writing about what you're learning here, what you get out of this, what you think of me, if it's good. If it's not, you can probably hold that part back. At the end of the podcast, I'll let you know how you can join Love You to be part of a community of smart, strong, successful women who are living the lives of their dreams finally. I want to begin today with something that just, it never stops hitting me hard. This is, I don't know, an hour ago. I was on my Love You Facebook group, graduate of the course, nothing but great things to say about her. She's walking the walk. She's living her best life. Tells me about a friend of hers and stop me if you've heard this before, but her friend is in a relationship with a man who does not want to get married. He's not saying never, he's just saying definitely not now or for the distant future. So she's in love with him. She has a lot of what she's looking for in a relationship, but she's not on the track she wants to be on. She wants to be on the marriage and commitment track. And she's on the, I'm dating a single dad who puts his work and his kids first. And I will not get that ring until his kids have gone off to college. But that doesn't mean she's going to get the ring. This is just the guy saying, I can't deal with your desire for a commitment now. This is all I'm giving you. And so she's now five years into this. And this is just in the Love You Facebook group, a friend of the friend. The other day, I got a potential Love You client on the phone. And she came to me and asked me how she should handle her relationship where she's been with him for five years And she's not happy with the status quo, but she doesn't want to leave him. She just wants to convince him that he should want to commit to her and marry her and be a better partner. So these are parallel situations. These are really common situations. And so I don't, I harbor no judgment, obviously, for the women who are going through this. I think it's a very, very difficult position to find yourself in because you're dealing with sunk costs. You're dealing with chemistry. You're dealing with the idea that this is pretty good, but not great. You're dealing with the idea that maybe you can't do better. Uh, You're dealing with the idea that I hate online dating. I don't want to have to go back to that grind. I don't want to be alone. There's a lot of fear. But what allows me to determine whether the person should stay in her relationship or not is really quite simple. And I would encourage you to ask this question of yourself. Am I happy with the status quo? If nothing changed, will I be happy with this in one year, five years, 10 years? And how do I feel? Am I constantly anxious? Do I feel needy? Do I feel like my needs are getting met? My famous quote, not mine, you're only as needy as your unmet needs. So some woman might be like, you know what? I like living my rich, full, single life. I see him once a week in between his job and his kids and the commute and all that kind of stuff. And I'm busy, and that's literally all I want out of a boyfriend. The way all he wants out of a girlfriend is someone who's there for him part-time. He doesn't want the full integration. But if you want the full integration, the merging of lives, the, the thing that people generally come to me for, and you don't have it, you're not gonna have it. Why? Because if he wanted to do it, he'd be doing it. And so this is what I say to prospects who, who come to me is, Nobody calls a dating coach to tell me how happy she is with her relationship. If your relationship was going gangbusters, if you were really happy, if you didn't have any anxiety about your status quo or your future, you wouldn't have reached out to me. You wouldn't have applied for coaching. You would just be enjoying your relationship. So this question usually comes down to, I love him. I want him to change. Got that? I love him and I want him to change. Here's the thing. He's not your project. He's not going to change. This is who he is. This is the relationship he wants. He wants to text you once a week to get laid. 
He wants to have all the trappings of a girlfriend just on his terms. He wants to get all the emotional need, his emotional needs met and the support and the love and all the stuff he can't get from his guy friends or his kids or his job. He wants exactly what he has now. If you're not satisfied, it's not incumbent upon him to change to meet your needs. It's incumbent upon you to find someone who could deliver your needs. This is what I mean about being the CEO of your love life versus being the intern. The intern says, if I work really hard, maybe he'll recognize me. Maybe he'll give me a raise. Maybe he'll give me a title. Maybe if I just keep on proving myself, I've been at this company for five years now. How come he's not paying me yet? It's because you're a free source of labor. He doesn't even have to pay you. He knows you won't leave. That's how he wins. He's not an evil person. He's a selfish person. He's getting his needs met. So I'm not telling you that you have to be married or that it's the only way to love. Not at all. If you're not satisfied, if in your heart, you know, your relationship is plateaued and it's not going anywhere because guys who want to propose do that in two years, three years at most. If you're going on five years or you've been going, you've been dating for two months and he hasn't offered to take down his profile and be your boyfriend. It's another thing. This is exactly what he wants. And if you stay, that becomes on you, which brings me to this core piece of advice that I heard from a colleague of mine named Jason Gaddis. Um, I was listening to him on, uh, uh, he was guesting on someone else's podcast and I was walking the dog and I wrote this down and I thought it was really powerful. So I'm going to, I'll leave you with this. You can hopefully take it to heart. He says, when I meet someone who's in a dead end relationship and how do I know it's a dead end? It's because she's not happy with the relationship, right? And her only solution is for him to change, right? Now, Evan Marquette's Love You says, sorry to speak in the third person. You can't have a relationship dependent upon someone changing. You don't say, I'm going to bank on the alcoholic's potential to get over his alcoholism. I'm not going to bank on a slacker's getting motivated to get a great career. I'm not going to bank on a guy who is a cheater to stop cheating. I'm not going to bank on a guy who has anger issues to stop being angry based on him going to therapy and wanting, not wanting to lose you. We don't bank on people changing. We accept them as they are. So per that, Jason Gaddis says to you, and I'm sharing this with you because I thought it was wise. Look at yourself in the mirror and say to yourself, I choose to stay in a relationship where I'm not getting my needs met. I choose to stay in a relationship where I'm not getting my needs met because that's what it comes down to. You have to look at yourself in the eye and know this isn't something he's doing to you. His needs are met. He is content. It's why he hasn't broken up with you after two months of sleeping with you and not becoming your boyfriend. He's happy sleeping with you without commitment, keeping his options open. Maybe you're the only person he's sleeping with, but he's got no desire to integrate you into his life and make you a permanent part of it. How do you know? Because he's not doing it. Men do what they want. So if you're in a relationship and it's not escalating and going somewhere and you feel that in your heart, look at yourself in the mirror and say it out loud. I choose to be in a relationship where I'm not getting my needs met. And I'm choosing it every single day. It's not a one-time choice that you made in the first week when you were really excited about him and his profile. It's a choice you make every day for months and years on end. At any point in time, you can make a different choice. Just like at any point in time, you could choose to move cities, change jobs, go on a diet, start a book club. At any point in time, you can change your narrative. But if you're not happy with the relationship you're in, don't wait for him to change. Don't go to couples counseling. Don't tell him the, oh my God, I'm going to tell him my needs and now he's going to change. You've told him your needs, I'm presuming, right? But the truth is, even if you do tell him your needs, his only incentive is to keep you there. So the story that I led with was a guy who was like, yeah, babe, you know, I mean, I, I do love you, but like, I'm not, I, I'm not going to marry you while the kids are at home. Okay. Well, that's at least five years. So she buys that and she's going to spend five more years as the intern waiting, 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 waiting. And after the kids are out of the house, you positive he's going to want to marry her? I'm not, because men who want to get married make that choice relatively quickly, quickly meaning two to three years, not 10 years. If there's always an excuse as to why someone's not doing something, the fact is they just don't want to do it. We could come up with real excuses, but they just don't want to do it. My, when my clients come to me and say, Evan, I'm too busy to date online. Okay. It just shows me that you don't want to do it. It's fine. I don't 
judge you for it. I don't know how I can get you a date if you refuse to date online. So recognize that you have choices, right? you have power, you are the CEO. Right? And if you fire the intern who's not living up to his expectations, that's far more empowering than giving your power away and waiting for some guy to change in order to be the man that you hoped he would be. My name is Evan Mark Katz. This is the Love You Podcast. I thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and click on the button where you ring the bell and get notified when new content comes out. Subscribe on Apple or Spotify. Uh, give us a positive review. Share this with your friends. Uh, smart conversation about dating relationships and men. And uh, if you have put up with bad behavior of men, if you are not living your dreams, if you feel like you're a good person, but the men you're choosing don't want the same thing that you do, please go to evanmarkatz.com forward slash apply. Give me your name and email address. Watch a short video on how to fix your broken man picker, and I will help you get the relationship that you so richly deserve. I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.